You know what's you know what's crazy? What? Think about this. We're sitting here right now in this room, and it's episode one ninety four of the it, Super Mega. Yeah, and it is episode one ninety four of the Super Mega Cast. But we're speaking, and our ready ready for this. Our are the vibrations. So we have a thought, right? Yeah. The thought then comes out via vibrations via our because our brain signals are like uh, vocal cords, and yeah, tongue, and mouth. everything to generate these words which it thought of. Then it goes into this microphone, and that data travels down this little cable down there into the mixer. Uh, and it converts then it through the data. USB, yeah, into the computer. Into the computer, which then it's it's data at that point, and then that data. The computer's saying something. Hold up. What? I know. Hold up. Is he giving us? Is he Let's giving us SAS? This one off your list. Windows is a service and updates are normal. Uh, tell tell that little bitch not to update. Remind me tomorrow. Okay. Anyway, that goes into the computer. Then we have to send it over. Uh, to be edited on our other computers, so we send it up to a fucking satellite and Ooh. back down, goes, doo, doo, down to a satellite, and then we edit it, and then we send it back up to a satellite, and then it hits servers, which <laughs> are stored somewhere, which then sends it across satellites and and hundreds of thousands of people's devices, and then so our voice is traveling quite a quite a large distance across this. Were earth. you just was that simply just to explain that? This the simple like basically you extrapolated from the simple phrase our podcast releases on a certain day of the week and is listened to by like a lot of people or whatever. Well, just the process. Of so like, you went is like so our voice travels into the microphone. Which I was thinking goes about into the, the mixer. Which I was, then <laughs> I was thinking about the physical okay, movement okay. of everything. I thought I thought you were just taking some weird route like long roundabout way to like just say yeah a part a part uh, a lot of people listen to our podcast. And the crazy thing is like. <laughs> It's like if our I'm, voices are, are going up into space and back down. Like, and like the that. data is for sure. I'm I know. not sure our voice. What's well, our voice? The data it is, is our, our the voice. Da- I mean, yeah. It's insane, dude. We're echoing th- through space. Like you're sitting in, in your 747 that's why we're flying trying, across the country. Our voice will fly right by your window. That's why we're trying to figure out and try to find other way, radio waves. You know? <laughs> oh, someone's talking to us. We Oops, should send our, our, our podcast into deep space. We should like get one of those big create a super mega a super mega capsule. A, no, not even like launch in space. Capsule. Get like a, a radio tower that just shoots a feed of our podcast into deep space. So maybe two hundred thousand years from now, some advanced. How, how expensive do you reckon that would be to to get a device that would shoot our podcast into deep space? Because space is so big that deep space is is um, is unfathomable for me to think of. I I, I think. Maybe a couple hundred dollars. Yeah? Yeah, get like a big, you can get a satellite. You just five miles into space should cover us. <laughs> There's a satellite on top of my house that I've never used. I guess it's from like the people that used to live there. We can just take that and point it. At, it's already pointed at space. Yeah. Just, we can uh, we can rig it up and just <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just put shoot. some tinfoil on it so it goes farther, <laughs> you know? How about we turn our podcast into like the, our sound waves into light molecules? That way it'll travel faster. Ooh, yeah, like, <laughs> way faster than, than just the, And they'll see what we're saying instead of just, just hearing they it. They can actually see the podcast. <laughs> yeah. It'll be beautiful. God damn. Well, 194, 194, the, the, the big number you guys have all been waiting for. Yeah, this is the one that we've hyped up for for years now. I've said, wait until episode 194, guys. It's gonna be some big shit. And here we are. The crazy thing uh, about 194, you flip one of the uh, numbers in there. It's 164. And if those remember 164 of the podcast, that was a crazy time. Crazy one. Same if you do 149. What a crazy yep. episode that was. Yeah, the one right before 150. It's ridiculous. God it was damn. Almost like the. Right before, it was like on the precipice before a new era. When people say, uh, oh, I'm, I'm listening back from the very beginning of the podcast, I, it makes me cringe a little bit. I'm like, oh, man, those early episodes, like, I feel like I was so unfunny and, and just. Oh, I feel like that's going to, like, imagine if we're still doing this five years from now. We're going to be looking at, like, this, this episode. This episode, and yeah. Like, yeah. Yikes. Yikes. Goinks. Goinks. That's the new. Uh... Can people tell, like, can people hear our our humor change i wonder like from episode because someone i saw someone recently uh i think that they're a trucker or something and they said that they listened to it took them three months but they listened from episode it one wasn't the guy who was uh overseas or whatever in the military because there was someone that on our subreddit that was like hey i'm an active duty and because of covid we i've been stuck on this ship duty yeah i've been stuck on this ship 
and uh, your your podcast I listen to every morning or something. I was like, oh, that's super sweet. Glad we could uh, help a help a manly man, help a macho be man, macho man out in the navy on a big ship, all with, yeah. with his muscular hunk brothers, pumping iron with his big things. guns and his big cock and his big brothers. You know he's got a big cock. <laughs> that guy's on a ship in the middle of the ocean right now, just doing military shit and hanging out with nothing but dudes. So. Uh, bravo to you. Thank you for listening. And uh, I can't believe you listened to all 190 something episodes. That's that's a dedication. I couldn't do that. Even was there a trucker the that you were talking about? Though? Yeah, there was someone that said it took them three months, but they they got all the episodes. Oh, like, now they haven't. They don't really have any any content. They can listen to our let's plays without watching. Them. Well, they have. Uh, they've actually lost the meaning of life now. Fuck. Because they for three months they were at the highest they've ever been, and now they. They just have absolutely nothing in their life. I remember back in the day when I was uh, going through uh, much turmoil in my life, the only thing that could save me was uh, watching someone play a game in a way that I disagreed with, but still <laughs> laughing at the jokes they made. It really brought me a, brought a tear to my eye and showed me that life is, is more than what I thought it was. I've been, I actually feel that way a little bit. Not, not what you <laughs> yeah. just said. Not not about the gaming you stuff. Watch, watch, while, while you watch Let's Plays? No, not about Let's Plays, but I've been I've been binging 90 Day Fiance, and now that I'm all... I, I caught up uh, two days ago, and now that I'm all caught up, I, I just keep having this feeling where I'm like, oh, man, I have to wait, and I just feel like... I finally found something during quarantine that, that made me, like, really excited, and I, and I was having a good time watching it. Uh, it's the new season with Big Ed and everything, and I, and then but I. But his story's almost closed, or is this is closed. I'm not sure. What about Baby Janine or whatever her name is? Baby Lisa. Dude. Baby Where'd Lisa. Where'd you get Janine from? I don't know. It's a girl's name. Lisa. You knew Baby exactly Lisa. what I was talking about. So well, that's you knew. True. That's so true. Well, it's ba Baby Lisa. I got my point across. But you know, I finally had like something to binge because I don't really like binging shows, or it's hard for me to get into shows. And I, I was like, yeah, I love this. And then now it's all done for now. I gotta wait a week now for the next episode, and it's just... The last trash TV I binged was The Circle. I watched mm. The American Circle, then I watched The the Circle Brazil. <laughs> and a circle. That's I, how they always do it. I love when a... Circle. They take, like, a TV show and syndicate it to another country. So well, I think have it like, started out in, like, before the U.S. I thought it was in, like, for, like France and Brazil, possibly, and then the U.S. I don't know. I thought the U.S. one was a little more new. When are we getting like super mega Brazil? Maybe I'm wrong. Or like super mega like Sma Mexico. Like Smosh Espanol. Oh, El Smosh. Shut up cartoons. Dude. What about El Smosh? El El they have a French one too where someone just dubs all the Smosh videos. I mean, that's very smart because there's a huge audience for uh, in like Latin American countries. Why not Chinese super mega? We already have that guy that does the laughs. That's Well, he's Japanese. Oh, well, never mind. We could do Japanese Super we Mega. We could do Japanese Super Mega. If we did Chinese Super See, Mega. I was, I was really hoping it was Chinese because then we could get into the Chinese market, which is with billions of billions of billions of millions of dollars. I imagine if you <clears throat> took all of our content from the very beginning and then they had to translate it to Chinese, the amount of stuff that would be censored out would probably leave you with maybe like a five minute video. <laughs> you talk about their, their president sometimes. Their I think we leader. called him Pooh Bear at one point. A lot of people call him Pooh Bear. You get, you get in trouble for that. Yeah? Yeah. What are they going to do? Ban ban my TikTok account? They could send someone over here to uh, <laughs> knock to on your door. Me? Like, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm here to do your, your lights, your electrical. The, I'm the electrician your landlord called. And then you're like, all right, just come on in. And then he comes in and he throws a hatchet into your neck. Do you think the Chinese government is more than capable of in secret without being found out assassinating you or I without a trace of evidence for Probably. our government or anybody else to follow? Probably. Hmm. It makes you wonder how many times that's happened then, huh? It does. It's freaky. Like, I, 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 I'm, sure that, I'm sure that that happens on American soil. I mean, it happens to probably every country. Like, they'll send people from other countries that will just slip under the radar and do something for their government and then go back. And they oh. never get caught. Oops, co coronavirus is bad. Never mind. He didn't say it. He said, he said coronavirus was epic. <laughs> <laughs> coronavirus is pretty epic. That's, that's my interpretation of the Chinese government. Oops. The, 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 uh, it's just weird because when sometimes I feel like when you criticize a government, the people take it as you're criticizing the people. Like when you criticize, like when uh, the American government is criticized, you see a lot of Americans going, why do you hate Americans so much? The same way as like if, if you were to, 
you know, talk about the Chinese government or talk about any other form of government. It's like, what do you have against the Chinese, brother? Huh? Here, I'll say this. Chinese people, very epic. Chinese government, not very epic. See, it's very simple. Yeah. Very simple. Very, it's, it's that simple. The Chinese people, very epic. Very epic. Some of them are, are not epic. Some of them are, are murderers, are pedophiles, uh, just like Americans. But Nope. But, I, I, not I don't, in America. I, I don't want to. I don't want to defend the 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 criminals of of each uh, region, but the good people are yeah. epic. The good Chinese. Then people. what's good? What do you deem is good? Oh, I'm pretty sure molesting children is not good. Um. Uh. Yeah. By our Western values, <laughs> molesting. <laughs> <laughs> is it there? Uh, <laughs> the only podcast for maps. Super mega cast. I'm sure there are cultures out there that celebrate young boy love, and it's just a part of their culture. My dad was trying to tell me, he's like, <laughs> you know, I just got into this young boy <laughs> no, love. <laughs> no, no, no. Son, I've actually discovered something recently. <laughs> oh, God. Um, no, my dad was trying to tell me, uh, he's like, you know, son, they're already starting the movement for uh, for grown men and young boys to be accepted. Have you heard of Nambla? And I'm like, uh, who the fuck takes Nambla Maps. seriously? Maps is another one, right? Maps, yeah. Well, you Maps is about... a minor attracted person, uh, which is, I guess, those that subsect of Twitter that's like, yeah, we're pedophiles, but uh, we're, we're it's okay. We're not ever going to do anything about it. We just want to be accepted and normalized. It's like, bro. You know how some people are attracted to elderly women and elderly people? I'm attracted to the exact opposite. Hey, Oops. Whoops. Uh, whoops. And people put it in their bios. It like, might be against the law, I guess, but who knows? I'm having fun. Yeah, I'm a map. So what? <laughs> uh, oh, Q no context. Oh, my God. Let's <laughs> cut that out of context. Like, the only podcast for maps. <laughs> Hey guys, we just wanted to say we support maps and any god. Looking back on door of the sun, it's like I'm the map. I'm the map. <laughs> it's like oh, okay, bro. Philly, what's up, you beautiful bastards? Today we are talking about Ryan McGee and Matt Watson of a channel formerly known as Markiplier Game. I, I mean, <laughs> Super Mega. Map apply. <laughs> map <laughs> map Septic Eye. How about that one? Maps Films. <laughs> <laughs> Map Mofo, <laughs> Maps Mofo, Map Gundacker. There's a, there's a lot of good ones out there. It's very easy to actually do it. Map, Map Watson, boom, there it is. Yeah, uh, can't wait for that one to catch on. Ryan Ma Map, you know. Ryan so, Map Gee, Map Gee. There, there. That's even better. That's even better. Um, there's there's a shit. Wow, I didn't realize it was uh, that easy. We're starting a new club. It's called the Most Awesome People Club. Ninja the Map. <laughs> You can't really, you know, map his name, so I had to fit it in there. Yeah. We are in no way saying any of these people are maps. But who's no. to say they aren't? They, I'm they, kidding. They, 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 but they, they, but they, they spilled never, the beans. They've never defended themselves, so how are we supposed to know? They've never not said that they weren't. Map grumps. <laughs> Could you imagine someone is like, starts an argument with... Yeah, so uh, my friend Matt's a pedophile. Wait, what? Matt's a pedophile? Uh, he's never said it explicitly, but he's never not said it. Mm, so that's true. That's true. <laughs> Think about that logic, Lord Map Seven Seven. <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> it's too easy, man. For us, it's super map. God, why is that a Good thing? Shit. Like it's like. I, my favorite ones are the people that try to include P in LGBT, where it's like LGBT P. What part of that? Yeah, PC yeah, yeah. Pedof it's like, bro, no. What are the stems? What is file? What is the stem for file? Pet, of a course. lover. Like a is it someone that's attracted to something? That's why. So child lover. Yes. If you okay. love music, you're an audiophile. Mm -hmm. um, cinephile. Cinephile. You love film. Pedophile. You love children. Mm -hmm. See, that's the thing. So a lot of people who work in daycare could. Self-describe themselves as pedophiles. As a ped technically, yeah. I love children. Yeah, I'm a pedophile. I love children. <laughs> no, not like that. No, I'm, I'm trying to reclaim the word pedophile. <laughs> Some guy that works at a daycare. Yeah, so uh, my name is Jake. I work at a daycare, and uh, I am a pedophile. No, not like that. I just I love children. I want to reclaim that word for the innocent people who just love children, and not in a weird way. You in know. In fact, in fact, uh, we have uh, a famous guest here to speak today. Um, uh, Unfortunately, he's only able to come through Skype. Jordan Peterson, uh, what do you think of this recent situation? So now in daycare centers, you can't touch the kids. It's like, what the hell? Thank you, Mr. Peterson. Thank you. Very valid point right there. <laughs> That's Jerry me. Seinfeld. Because he did actually used to work in daycare. Jordan Peterson? Yeah. Did? He used to work uh, in a, like at a daycare center. I'm thinking about quitting Superman and just going to go work at a daycare. I'm not. 
Okay, well, that's your choice. That's your decision. Have fun with that. I will. I love children. <laughs> I, I'm going to be done. I'm, I'm done giving people sound bites to snip out without context. Yeah. I only did that with Jordan because I, I it was too good of a, I had to snip it. I, I, I was listening to this little lecture of his. I was listening to him talk and I heard that and I went, whoop, meme time. Oh. Just like, um, <clears throat> forgot what I was saying. I was taking a sip of my Starbucks peach green tea and it just, it, it just washed looks like my, watered down piss. It does look like watered down piss. Well, no, actually, no, it doesn't. That looks like really concentrated piss. That's like, if your piss is that dark, then you got to hydrate. That's some dark piss. Yeah, but you've seen piss worse than that. Have you seen like the dark yellow, like where it looks kind of like... Like kind of old crusty Melly Yellow. I've seen Tom Pearl's videos, right? Yeah, trust okay. me. Like well, you, you also have a. No, I don't. You, know, um, you don't want to talk about that. I don't want to talk about that. Why no. don't you want to talk about it? Because the things that go on in my house are 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 to stay within. Yeah, the but I think group. it's interesting, and I think everybody else would think it was interesting. No, I don't think so. Why not? I think we're good. I, I, <laughs> I don't think when you're talking about any piss related. Uh, Bags in my well, house. Now I guess unfortunately, you know, people are just gonna have to guess what it is, and it's up to their brain. I guess they. It's all have perfectly to. valid. I promise, it's not a tank of piss I'm storing in my house <laughs> that I've been slowly filling up for the last two years. He is right. It's not a tank. It's a bag. No. <laughs> it's a container. It's a container. It's it's a uh, it's one of those uh, plastic storage. Has it bins. separated yet? Yes, it has. It's one of those plastic storage bins. So what separates? Uh, I don't know. Okay, I guess I'll I'll tell it now because Ryan has twisted my wrist. There is uh, <laughs> none of the piss is mine. Uh, it's all Harrison's. Yes, Harrison. The, the when you think of Harrison, you, the first image is like very artful guy who loves wine and is really good at cooking and really enjoys French cinema. It, continue. Um, well, see, I ordered Popeyes one <laughs> night and I was like, damn, I'm gonna get a. They have a. I can just get a gallon of sweet tea. So I got a bag. It, it comes in a bag, like a like a plastic. Uh, I don't know how to describe it. It's like a not it's like, like a, trash a giant bag. IV bag with the Popeyes logo on. It. Exactly, um, with a screw on top. And I, I bet Harrison. I said, I bet you can't fill this whole thing with piss. It was, I mean, so like I was the one that birthed this whole thing. He yeah. said, "Watch me." And um, within a couple of days, he had filled it with piss. And we were gonna throw it away. And then I said, "Wait a second. Like Harrison was like, "This is disgusting." I'm gonna throw it away. I was like, "Wait, wait, 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 wait. How rare is it?" to have a bag of piss like this like that sealed off just a perfect bag of piss what can like we can do something with this we can you know so now it's kind of become a science experiment where we've set it aside and we just want to see how long like what happens to piss after a long time i just so many people listening are like what the fuck so, so what has happened well you should have given this piss to that channel that you like so much the time lapse channel see i'm trying to do that myself right now do you have a time lapse camera set up for the next? No, I no. just have been using my brand. But it's, it's very dark. It's changed colors by a by. It's actually becoming the color of, of the Popeyes orange on the bag. My favorite part is when you told Carson, <laughs> the youngest Tucker brother, you told Carson that uh, Harrison was making a wine. Yes. Yeah, so Carson had just come back uh, from the airport after being gone for like a <laughs> month and a half, and he sees the bag and he's like, "What's that?" And Harrison's like, oh, yeah, we, uh, I'm making plum wine. Check this out. Like, smell it. Sm smell it. And we open it up and he goes, oh, what? whoa. And we're like, yeah, that's piss. And you smelled it and you started gagging. Yeah, I did. You it, said it. I, I haven't smelled it. It filled the you, room. You said it. you said I would not be able to handle it. Because you know you know how my gag reflex is. My tolerance for what makes it's me very gag. very high. And yours is very low. And if that made me gag, like, horribly. I, I'd throw up instantly. Yeah, yeah. It's it's really bad. Because it stays, because the piss stays in your throat, I'm sure, in your nostrils. So when you smell bit. something, like, is that actually, like, physical particles, or is it just some kind of stimulation? I mean, the particles are traveling. That's what smell is, right? So the is, smell is, it is actually, traveling. is it actually, like, the physical particles of whatever you're smelling? So let's I feel say, like in this case it would be. It would be different to say if, like, you were... I don't know. Cause what like, is it, smell? Because when you're because when you're cooking a steak and you smell it from like two yard the uh, five yards away, you're definitely smelling that. Are you that steak? Well, think about it. Because when you're cooking steak, the little tiny particles from from let's say you're like, cooking it off the grill. Yeah, yeah, it's it's being cooked off. Like the bits of moisture going up in the air and floating away. Well, I think of a restaurant. You know, when you're out in the streets of L.A. or wherever. Is busy and has food. You smell the delicious food. You're like, fuck. What is that? 
What is so? Yeah. What is what is like at the most basic form? What is smell? Okay. Is it the carrying of microscopic particles of a certain thing, thus giving us information? It's crazy, or, actually, because when you think about the senses, you are unable to describe any of them. Like if you had to describe them to someone that didn't have it, like if someone that was born without a sense of smell, how would you be able to describe smell? Like taste. Because well yeah, because smell is very linked to taste. I mean, isn't it? It's it's one of the big factors. But even hearing or, or seeing, like if someone didn't have that, you couldn't explain that to them. So that makes me wonder, like, kind of on the last podcast note, like how many things exist or just are out there that we can't comprehend. Mm -hmm. um, here we go. I'll tell you what it is. The perception of odors or sense of smell is mediated by the olfactory nerve. The olfactory receptor, OR, cells are neurons present in the olfactory, I can not even try to pronounce that, which is a small patch of tissue at the back of the nasal cavity. It's there are us millions. what helps us smell, but like, what are we smelling? Like, well, yeah, here we go. There are millions of OR neurons that act as sensory signaling cells. Each neuron has cilia. So cilia are like those little like yeah. hairs uh, in direct contact with the air. Odorous molecules bind to receptor proteins extending from cilia and act as a chemical stimulus, initiating electric signals that travel along the nerve's axons to the brain. All right. So when an electrical signal reaches a threshold, the neuron fires, which sends a signal to the brain. But I still want to know, like, is it is 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 smell like is it actually so they're they're molecules, but are they like vaporized? Like why do, why does something produce like why does something produce a smell? Is that what you're trying to get at? Like when when I sh when, when you take a shit. Is what I you're know, smelling? Yeah, it's an is that shit. poop? Is that like poop particles entering my nose, and that's why I'm smelling it? Like, what creates the aroma? Is that what you're? That's what you're trying to get at? Yeah, I'm trying to figure out like what, like what's coming from. Just it. say why do things sm smell? That's a good one. On my hold, my phone. Just why broke. do things smell? Okay, first suggestion is fart smell, poop particles. Um, but I don't know what happened. I clicked it, and it changed my Google search to is smelt a word. <laughs> Hold on one second. What is, what is, well, smell at the base of it is just chemical reactions, right? Right. Of, so I'm wondering, gases. like, is it just basic, like, you're not actually smell, like, smelling, it's not actually particles of that, but it's more of, like, the organic compounds stimulating the nerves in a certain way to make your brain react to that thing, you know? Yeah. It's what, you ever thought about, like, is, is smell the same for everyone or, like? Color, because you know that whole thing where it's like, what if your blue is my red, but that's just your normal. I, I see. Here's the thing: like, I don't feel like it's as extravagant, or sorry, it's as different as my blue is your red. I feel like we do, unless you're colorblind, see all colors, kind of the pretty much generally the same. The same. But I mean, it comes down to really just like us as humans, we build preferences for no reason, right? Like, I mean, you have your reasons, but yeah, there's no, there's no really precise reason why I like blue over another color. It's just like, I do. That's interesting. I wonder what, what is the basis like in your brain for preferences, right? Because you could say your favorite color is blue and I could say my favorite color is green why and we it, wouldn't be able to explain but why. But why does it visually appeal to you? Like why, how come someone's favorite color is yellow? But I'm like, why would that be your favorite color out of like even above green, red, blue? Yeah. Oh my God, Matthew. Yes, Ryan. If you like sex, guess what? What? You'll love BlueChew.com. You want to know why? Why? Because BlueChew.com offers men a performance enhancement. Or the bedroom. The bedroom? <laughs> for my yeah. penis? For your cock and balls. For my cock and balls? Mostly your cock, but also your balls help. So you're telling me that if I take Blue Chew, I can have great sex with a woman or a man anytime I want? With a fully erect penis to pleasure her with. Not not that sloppy little thing you have to stuff in there like, like, like you're stuffing receipts into a purse. At BlueChew.com, you can get the first chewables with the active ingredients Sildenafil or Tadalafil, same active ingredients as in Viagra and Cialis. BlueChew.com affiliated physicians work with you to find the dosage and active ingredient that is best for you. Chewables can work faster than traditional pills. These chewables from Blue Chew can be taken on a full or empty stomach. And the online physician consultation is free, so it's cheaper than the other options. Come on, fellas. It only takes a few minutes to connect with the BlueChew.com affiliated physician. And if you qualify, you get prescribed online quickly. No in-person doctor visit, no awkward conversation, no waiting in line at a pharmacy. It ships directly to your door in a discreet package. The chewables from BlueChew.com are made in the United States of America, baby. Woo! 
You can't have a strong nation unless your people have strong boners. And BlueChew.com will give you the confidence in bed every time. You and your partner will love it. Chew it and do it. And here's the thing, guys. We've all, uh, fellas, we've all had that performance anxiety where you're, you're shaking that little thing around and, and your partner's staring at you and you're all nervous. Like, oh, God, come on, come on, get up. This, this is the perfect solution to that. There's no shame. And, and we, we got a great deal for you. Visit BlueChew.com and get your first order free when you use promo code SUPER. Just pay $5 shipping. That's blue com promo code SUPER. Go get some boners, guys. Do you guys know about a thing called June Gloom? Is this said simply because it rhymes? That's ridiculous. What could possibly be gloomy about June? The sun is out, birds are chirping. You'll probably get a tan just walking to your mailbox. Where, if you're lucky, you'll find incredibly soft undies from me undies. How'd we get there? Just wait. I remember like it was yesterday, Ryan. I, I, put, I put on my first pair of me undies, and, and before I did, I was like, ah, what's so special about this? Just some, some, some internet underwear. And I, I put them on, and I was blown away at how genuinely soft and comfortable they were. And it feels good around my genital area. And I don't have to go to Walmart to go buy any underwear. I can just get it straight in the mailbox. I love it. Anyway, back to discovering those undies in your mailbox while June's non-gloom sunshine is bronzing your shoulders. At this point, the situation is hypothetical. We're going to tell you how to make it real. MeUndies has this brilliant thing called an undies membership, where every month the softest undies ever appear at your door. The convenience factor is clutch. You never have to leave the house. Oh, and you also get site-wide savings, early access, and free shipping. It's pure joy, because when undies greet you in the mailbox, June gloom is doomed. It's a good rhyme. MeUndies are made from micromold irresistibly soft, sustainable fabric that encases your nether regions in cloud-like comfort. It's magically made from trees. Another reason to give them a hug. Offered in sizes from XS to 4XL. To get 15% off your first order, free shipping, and a 100% satisfaction guarantee, go to MeUndies.com slash SuperMega. That's MeUndies.com slash SuperMega. From lattes to dog treats, CBD is popping up in everything. But it's so confusing, so complicated. Where do you start? How can you tell what's good and what's not good? And even more importantly, who can you trust? Those were some of the questions I had. And SunSoil CBD had all the answers. With SunSoil, you know it's in every bottle and exactly where it came from. There's no second guessing because they only use ingredients you can understand and trust. Most of their products have just two, organic hemp and organic coconut oil. Mm -mm. Transparency and quality control are what sets SunSoil apart from the rest. They farm all their own hemp in the green mountains of Vermont and extract the CBD themselves, testing for quality and purity every step of the way. They never use pesticides, herbicides, or GMOs. Because SunSoil does everything in-house and keeps their products simple, they can offer the highest quality CBD at unbeatable prices. In fact, SunSoil products are half the price of other ingestible CBD brands. Every SunSoil product is USDA organic, including their oil drops, soft gels, capsules, and coconut oil. I personally love the soft gels, and I love the calming effects of CBD. It's, it's, it's incredible. Uh, CBD is amazing. It's really changed my life. It helps me with my anxiety and stuff like that. It's great. I love it. SunSoil removes all the guesswork by making pure and simple CBD products at an unbeatable price. Get 30% off your first order by going to sunsoil.com slash supermega. That's S-U-N-S-O-I-L dot com slash supermega for 30% off your first order. Would you say blue is the most common popular color, like favorite color? Maybe. In my experience, it seems like it's always blue with people. And I love blue. Blue is a beautiful I color. I feel like it's it's usually, from what I've garnered, blue, red, green are the three top colors. <laughs> yeah. And then you'll have the outliers, which will say like purple, black, uh, orange. Black is, I knew someone that's, their favorite color was black, which I, I get. I mean, black is is a cool color. Um, my my favorite colors well, right now are color. just any earth tones. Like, uh, you know how there's a, uh, well, greens or blue, just anything like earthy, like clay colors. Yeah, those and uh, I th I think just natural colors I like a lot. Like, so you can say blue, just anything that like is very. I like sa I like saturated. I think more than. Mm. More than like faded? Yeah. I've never, ever, ever, ever had a favorite color. I've never been able to make my mind up on what, because every time I think I have a favorite color, I second guess it. I'm like, yeah, but this color is really good too. When I was a kid, I had like my favorite colors. It switched between like uh, blue and white, I think. Because mm. I, because I liked, uh, I just liked the look of it in like video games when you got to like have 
choose your Halo armor in Halo oh, 3, yeah. I'd be like, whoa, all white Halo armor. That looks badass. Black and white are both very sleek colors. Yeah. Um, well, well actually, I like black more than white now. Because, think, because because I am not a racist. Exactly. Same I am here. for the black. Yes. I support black. Um, I For a long time, my favorite color... I did have a favorite color in part of elementary school and middle school, which was yellow. But yellow as in not like uh, school bu- or not like school bus right yellow, yellow like but macaroni more like orange type of yeah kind of like the more golden okay, yellow yeah, yeah, yeah. like uh, I know what you're talking about like a number two pencil like that was my favorite color for a very long time and now as I've gotten older like I still really like yellow but it uh it's funny how colors make you feel emotions yeah like it's just a different uh wavelength of light but it makes you feel different things like that's why fast food restaurants uh have a lot of red because red apparently Makes well, you red and hungry. Yeah, both those colors kind of stimulate that. Yellow for how fast your eye reacts to that color, mm-hmm. and red because it may, it's been proven to make you hungry. Which is why school buses are yellow because it's the first color you, your brain notices. That and like that's orange. why it's funny when they hit children. Exactly, and then <laughs> it's like, how'd you not see it? And then uh, orange uh, stimulates like adrenaline, I think. So orange gets you kind of like uh, pumped. Okay. Purple apparently is supposed to give you more confidence. I've heard that wear purple. But there's on a there's date. such a big spectrum, right? You can't just yeah. like go to someone and like th- these aren't like abilities in a video game. It's like I cast. Uh, you can't hold up a purple sheet and all of a sudden it's like confident. Yeah, yeah. Mm. <clears throat> but these are colors that, like, I guess subconsciously yeah. triggered help. Because I I would say that I mean when I grew up. Like at my dad's house, uh, well, we moved several times, but at the one that I uh, lived in when I was in high school, my room was, the walls were blue and gray and like the ceiling was kind of grayish or white or whatever. So very cool, calm. At my mom's house, my walls were just red. Dude. My bedspread was red and white. I hate that. I know. I, I had a friend who had a, a bedroom and the walls were just red. And I, it, it's, it made me, it gave me anxiety. I go back to it and I'm like, good Lord, this was a lot. But it's because when I was young, you know, when you're young, you, you develop uh, obsessions over the most minuscule things. Like I had an obsession with collecting different eras of uh, Coke bottles because there were different, like there are some Coke bottles that were completely spherical in the center, but still long mm. at, on either end. I just thought it was cool to... Uh, the difference and so I had a coke clock I I liked <laughs> I liked coke red I really liked the because the, whenever I thought of coke red I just thought of mm, delicious coke well, on I ice. love I love red red is is one of my favorite colors but like there's something about being surrounded by it is very like gives me anxiety mm-hmm. I think um, same with like a dark green would give me anxiety. A dark green would, I feel like, give like sage would make me feel more calm. Like it's in, like I'm in a dark forest. Here's something interesting: uh, warm colors and cool colors. When you're when a, when you're in a space where the walls are warm color, you actually feel that the temperature is warmer than you would in a space with cool colors, even though the temperature is the exact same. Um, hmm. That's interesting. Huh. And uh, we are naturally huh. more drawn to warm colors, apparently, such as reds and oranges. So they're good colors to put at the end of a long hallway to use to draw people towards a particular section of large space. Uh, putting a light color on a wall makes that wall seem a little further away than it actually is, while darker colors make them seem closer to their true position. I guess that's true because if my room, like if this room was painted black, I think it would feel a lot smaller than like if it was painted white. Yes. You know? Because like, I guess like black makes it feel like you're like boxed in. Where- well, well, think about like the difference. Uh, the the one big difference I can really think about is think of when you and me and Mark and Daniel all lived together. Remember Daniel's room when he had his blinds shut and his windows with the blackout curtain shut? It looked like a small room. You're like, oh, he got the smallest room. It wasn't but- though. No, but when he he opened up his windows, like it just felt bigger. Yeah, felt like there was more room to like lay out, even though it's the same shit. When it's I open light. my blinds in my room, my room feels like. <laughs> It, it, it it's like I like opening up my windows and blinds because it makes your room feel like just bigger. You know, it's like you have more space to think. Yeah. Here's a here's actually a short little list of uh, rigorous research has revealed the special powers of particular colors, and this is an article by Psychology Today, which is a a pretty trusted uh, source. They actually just published a thing about Ninja Brian. Oh wow! And how gay he is. All right, uh, green. <laughs> Seeing the color green has been linked to more creative thinking, so greens are good options for home, offices, art studios, etc. Red. People see others in front of red backgrounds generally find 
those individuals more attractive than when they see them against other colors. So reds are great for a bedroom wall. Having a red surface in view also gives a burst of strength. So reds are a good choice for home gym areas, etc. Seeing red has been linked to impaired analytical reasoning, though, making it a bad option for offices. So I got to make my background of my uh, profile picture red. Mm. Sorry, I just saw something and then I just got a little flutter of happiness. I was like, oh, wow, that's super nice. Rockcock64. Oh, I love added us on on Twitter talking about because this is something you know how you and I have been wanting to do kind of like more live action. So we found a way to kind of like on a whim we just decided to do like a mini sketch sketch for the the Resident Evil episode. He was just saying how much he enjoyed that and uh, how it add as in his words adds a little pepper to the Let's Plays. Oh, I love Rockcock. Rockcock is a really sweet dude. Yeah, Um, super nice. I don't know. It's just like I know. Like I'm. It's weird because I'm making a big deal out of like, oh, he said something nice. And it's like, yeah, but you you forget how often Matt and I mostly just see like negativity because that's what sticks out. And so it's nice yeah. to see that one, shit one negative comment sticks out more than a hundred positive comments. But that's because we're pussies. Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> but Rock Ox are really cool dude. Also, it's just weird to me when people that like I actually like and, and admire yeah, watch exactly. our stuff. Because like, like I think, oh whoa, he's he's a funny fucking dude. Yeah. So then when I see like he watches us, I'm like, oh what? I know. Uh, let me let me finish this real quick. Let's see. Violet people link a grayish violet with sophistication, so it can be a good selection for places where you're trying to make the right impression. That's good because people use a lot of uh, violet uh, for their weddings and stuff too. Mm, okay. Like when when I think of a wedding, I think of kind of like a gray and violet color combination. Yeah, violets uh, is like violet, violet maybe like a. Like a powder blue, whites, yeah. lots of whites. Yellow, using yellow in a home can be problematic. It might say the N-word. Many people dislike the color, so if you have a lot of yellow rooms in your home or a yellow front door, you may be advised to repaint to get the best price for your home. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of yellow walls. Yeah, I know. Yellow, yellow walls feel... I used to have them, though, because it was on that... You know that vanilla that's more on the tinge of yellow than than tan, like white, I guess? You know, French vanilla, yellow, like, kind of like beige. Yeah, not b- beige, beige, but, more but it's cream. really more on that yellow side, like a cream. Those are the yeah. walls that I used to have. I think in my old home, and I just remember, like vanilla. I, ice I have a certain nostalgia link to that yellow with those walls. Well, it's like warm, and you know, like warm memories. This says yellow uh, is accepted in kitchens a lot because warm colors stimulate appetite. Yeah, yellow in kitchen makes sense, or even a bathroom. Yeah, but bathroom, I usually think more like aqua or like mint, uh, or even like a like a faded color. Blue, and the last one is blue. People are more likely to tell you that blue is their favorite color than any other shade. That makes it a safe choice. Seeing blue also brings thoughts of trustworthiness to mind. Always a good thing. Okay. Interesting. There's two types of people that when, when they hear that most people think blue is their favorite color. There's the type of person that, that will go, <laughs> good thing I like purple. I'm not, I'm not a sheep like you blue loving people. And then there's the people who legitimately like blue and hear that and go, no, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not special. Oh no. <laughs> Relax. If you like blue, it's fine. There's blue. a reason why blue is loved. It's a great color. It's a pretty color. It's a wonderful color. Um, okay. I remember this growing up because growing up in South Carolina, uh, as a kid, uh, I remember that like, you know, being gay was was especially back when we were growing up was something that was like you would get made fun of for you didn't want to be looked at as girly or yeah gay and i remember pussy. being told by a lot of guys that purple was the was the gay color like purple was the gay color and i brought that up to carson recently and he said he never heard that really? do you ever remember hearing that that purple was the gay color? i remember and at my school there was a there was a stint where like um there was the whole craze of only real men wear pink and thus out of that, purple was now the gay color. Because, mm. like, a lot of the jocks would wear, like, pink polos or pink stuff polos, like yeah. that. But I then like purple pink, became the, the gay color. Why is pink Even though associated? purple is more close, is very closely linked to, I think, uh, oh, what is it? Uh, I forget. Oh, well. <laughs> Barney. Yeah. Barney. Barney. Purple, purple is one of my favorite colors. Pink's a nice color. You're wearing a pink shirt right now. Uh, it's it's uh, Don's... Art, I love, I want Don to release more like a uh, muscle shirt, or I guess not muscle shirt, uh, tank top merch, because I really like- Don can make bank if you I really like shirts. this shirt. This is one of, I will say this, and Don is not ever going to hear this, and I don't care, but this is honestly probably my favorite shirt I own. It looks great. One, the colors are fantastic. It adds color, and I barely wear color. It's comfortable as fuck. 
it looks nice. I like the design of it. It's not a, too abrasive. It's just like it's, it's just soft. a nice shirt. What and what is okay? This is even and it's going, Cassette Girl, and I yeah, love Cassette that Girl's character awesome. of his. He he should I want him to do merch. more merch because I really love this shirt, and I'm I'm afraid for the day that it fades fully. Well, it looks like it's screen printed, maybe, so it's it's not it has not faded yet. Yeah. Mm. I have a question. What? We talked about this in a recent podcast. Uh, so you know how, like, when humans see, for instance, that shirt looks really nice because those colors go together. Mm -hmm. But what makes colors go together? Like, you can't really explain why, I guess. Same as music, when you hear a certain set of notes formed together to make a chord, it sounds pleasing. And every like everyone can agree, if you put three notes together that don't match, it sounds bad. It sounds weird. Or it's art. Yeah. But <laughs> do you think aliens, like if there were another, they would, would, would they come to the same conclusions? Would music colors? still be the same? Would like, would color combinations in their mind still, obviously they'd be a little bit different. Are you, are you trying to like, you're basically, you're asking, is there a, is there an unknown yet universal acceptance to certain types of like music or color combinations? Yeah. Like, is there without us a uni like a, an objective uh, way of looking at things to be, I guess, not better, but more pleasing, more pleasing to the eye. Like it would, would aliens, uh, let's say an alien, an advanced alien race exists. Would they find the same set of color combinations that humans find pleasing, pleasing? Would they find the same? Maybe not because, uh, the way that evolution took their quote unquote alien race has led them in their brains to not recognize red as hunger or not recognize oh. these colors as certain things subconsciously. Their culture and everything surrounding like that's true. That stuff would be different, or their eyes could have even have evolved differently, so they see color differently. Yeah, and I wonder if uh, because there are colors we don't see. I feel like music. There are colors that fish see that we can't see, right? I don't. Fish can see better than we can. There, there are colors that exist that we cannot see, and that blows my mind. Like, what would that look like? But I think when when we think of colors that we can't see, are we thinking of like another primary? Like, there's an like when you think of red. Blue, green, orange, you know, those main colors. Is there another one of those or the colors that we can't see? Or are they just a certain hue of a color that our eyes can't pick up? It's uh, actually, I'm pretty sure that infrared <laughs> and ultraviolet, infrared and ultraviolet, I think are both colors. Uh, let me see this real quick. Like when you put something in negative? No, like infrared. Like color? Um, infrared is, <clears throat> okay, hold on. Red, green, and yellow, blue are so-called forbidden I thought colors. infrared was, is it not based on heat? Signature well, no, though? infrared, think about like there's there's waveforms and colors are different lengths of waveforms. There's ones that our eyes can't see but are yeah. still outside of the realm of what we can see. And I'm pretty sure infrared and ultraviolet are both. Um, let me see. Hold on. Try to imagine reddish green, not the dull brown you get when you mix the two pigments together, but rather a color that is somewhat like red and somewhat like green. Or instead, try to picture yellowish blue, not green, but a hue similar to both yellow and blue. Is your mind drawing a blank? That's because even though those colors exist, you've probably never seen them. Red, green, and yellow, blue are so-called forbidden colors composed of pairs of hues whose light frequencies automatically cancel each other out in the human eye. They're supposed to be impossible to see simultaneously, yet they exist. Hmm. Interesting. It's because the cells in your retina, called the opponent neurons, uh, fire when stimulated by incoming red light, and this flurry of activity tells the brain we're looking at something red, those same opponent neurons are inhibited by green light, and the absence of activity tells the brain we're seeing green. Interesting. I remember when I was a kid, I was like, when I go to heaven, I want to see colors that I've never seen. <laughs> I mean, it could be a heaven, you know. You never know. I wonder if we'll ever be able to advance technology enough where, like, you they can replace our eyes with, like, one that could see more colors. No, well, that is that is actually a topic that is very interesting that you bring it up because you're you're thinking of just the eye, but I'll, I don't mean to word it like that because that just means that you're not thinking of it in the larger scale. What I, what I mean is there is actual discussion of, well, when will bionic limbs just be better than regular legs or arms? And, when, and will rich people or will people at a certain point in the future end up buying, quote unquote, fake limbs or eyes or things that work better and last longer? Because what we have is you have to like maintain it. You have to do certain things to keep them to a certain strength or looking a certain way or uh, you can't possibly achieve the speed with your regular legs that you could with these new bionic legs. Yeah, basically like upgrading your body to more superior parts and 
one thing I never hear talked about anymore that was a big debate in the mid 2000s is stem cells. Like, I you, think do you people, ever hear about stem cells anymore? Every now and then, because it's still just. I've heard a lot of good things about stem, stem cells. Research. Are like, like it's like a miracle. Like yes. it's, it's incredible. You can grow. It's, the, it's like a, the closest thing to a medical miracle we have to to see with our own. You eyes. can essentially like regrow a limb, or let's say that like your kidney fails or your heart fails. You can essentially like your body can repair it essentially with these cells because stem cells. If I'm if if I'm correct. Stem cells are basically like the root cell that can grow into kind of anything in the human body and they come from embryos. And then the big debate is they're illegal because it's like, oh, well, that's a human life. That's, you know. Yeah. Um, but what if stem cells are illegal? Because but, but stem cells powerful. are being used. Rich people use stem cells in, in like these test uh, things, don't they? I think so. But I guess just in in the in general, like let's say there's, there's a kid because uh, they say that like if you're blind, you could see again, hypothetically, with stem cells. Like if a kid- Because it repair, it literally re repairs the structural imbalance that was created. It's like it's, you're regrowing that, like your body is recreating what went wrong. And I wonder, what if they're actually illegal because the people realize they're too powerful? Because they could do anything with their bodies. They could, they could become superhuman. I wonder if in our lifetime, if like genetic modifications are going to start becoming like a, a center of debate. You know, like, yeah. for instance, designer babies. That's already been a thing of debate, like in China. Uh, Why does it always go to fucking babies? Why do we always have to mess with children, dude? Because I don't think people see them as having, because uh, I guess they don't have a say in it and they're not going to care. Is yeah, what that's true. Think. But in China, there's the whole thing about designer babies, right? Not Where, saying that that argument's true, but the way that people are thinking about it is, yeah, I yeah. guess that's true. Because um, I don't agree with <laughs> So, So the, essentially, they're... Maybe I'm thinking of it wrong, and I'm thinking about it in a more abusive way than than is intended. But what China's doing, it's it's essentially like a character customizer, except it's like I want my baby to have these eyes, and I want my baby to have this hair, and I want my baby to have this and that. Yes, and so a here's the definition. A designer baby is a baby whose genetic makeup has been selected or altered often to include a particular gene and to remove genes associated with disease. Now, in that case, I'm all for that. If, if you're actually doing something to remove genes associated with disease, that's great because I guess hypothetically you could begin to eradicate certain diseases from existence. But that's if, the next move, right? Is test tube babies. Yeah. Um, is just, it's, it's like... Why then? Then in the future, why would we, ha you know, why would women want to go through the intensive care and labor of birthing a child when they could easily uh, create an artificial womb that that baby could live in? You know, in the future, are things just going to be we're just producing babies now? Is it going to be like a you, factory? Like, are you going to be able to just go adopt a baby? Like, you or like a build your own a from cat? a plan, and you don't yeah. even have to give birth. It's like you can like you give them. Your like a couple will give their sperm and egg, and mm -hmm. then they can just basically design it, and then they, they have don't a little even camera. Have to... You can check on your artificial womb. I think once that happens, that's when we're in like the next level of humanity. Yeah. You know, in the sense of like uh, evolution. Like I think when we hit space, that was one level, and like the internet was another level. And I think once people can actually like genetically modify their child before it's born, mm -hmm. that's like another level of which is scary though, because what happens if uh. I, I've talked you about You have this a tyrannical Ross. regime that takes a hold of that type of technology when you talk about, oh, um, we're not, we're only, like, think of a racist with that technology. Mm -hmm. Hey, no more Asian babies allowed. Asian babies are off limits against the law to make in America. That, like, that type of shit. Yeah, but w what's also scary is, I talked about this with Ross, is once there's generations of these uh, more perfect humans because I guess like by design if they're designed like they are more perfect than a regular human they lack a lot of like genetic flaws that humans regular humans that are just born via sex would have mm -hmm. and what happens if like they come together and they're like we are the superior humans and these are like flawed humans why 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 are but they still share the same flaw as the other humans I think arrogance is the biggest flaw Right. Yeah, but you can't get rid of that with a gene. No, that, that that's what I'm saying. They still do have flaws. That would be their ego. In there. Right, and they still do have flaws. But like, genetically, if 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 like, about, are, like there would be like this would be like a new race. Yeah, they have like stronger muscles, better eyesight, uh, less 
you know, like they're resistant to all these like diseases and viruses. These, the, like it, essentially they would start uh, kind of like think of one of them having a political rally and saying all of these regular humans are spreading diseases. They're holding us back. Yeah, they're holding us back. They're spawning these new diseases that we can't keep up with while our genes are are 100 percent not going to um, build up a disease over time. These humans are are. Um, incubating these diseases and making life worse for our livestock for way maybe it's not even livestock anymore because if if the humans are fake either. livestock would be fake we already have fake livestock because yeah this already happens with plants and livestock mm -hmm. cows are genetically engineered chickens to be bigger to produce more meat uh to grow faster than yeah. they already do like same with uh, like gmos i guess that's more of an abusive though like that do, do they genetically change the chickens before they're born? I, yes. Okay. Because it's not... Because uh, I felt it was like m much more of like overfeeding them and s filling them with certain chemicals and shit that like they're essentially um, building up these perfect chickens and then uh, selectively breeding them to create their chickens that they want to continue. Yeah. I mean, that's what it is. G GMOs, like okay. genetically modified yeah. organism like corn, for mm -hmm. instance, they have corn that is bigger, grows Maize. faster. Some maize, yeah. That's crazy, though. Like, um, I just wonder how far we will get into genetic modification before it becomes like, because it already, GMOs already are a hot button issue with people, you know. But it's like, like these things where it's like, this is a new issue. We never thought of having to create rules for these issues because we didn't think these issues were around. But now that these issues are starting to, you know, uh, prop up, we need to start talking about. Yeah you know, the realistic impact that they might have. And another issue that will go alongside this one that we're, I think, I think we'll we need to like, worry about AI. AI that's what I was about to say is AI. AI. I think AI is going to be something that we're going to see. Um, because I, I wonder if later in our life, w there will start being the debate of like AI rights. Like is the, can this thing one. actually feel, is it because I do think it's possible to develop something complex enough where it actually feels, but, but does it actually feel or are you programming it? To act like it feels, but you could say the same thing like humans, reacting. right? Because we're programmed no, with that's DNA. That's what I'm saying. That's the line. Like, where is the line? Like, is the line? Like, is the line? And that will be the debate. Yeah, yeah. I th that because like you can talk right now, like AI in video games. You can make AI stupid, and like they, it looks like they feel pain, but they don't feel pain. It's just code. It's, yeah, it's just like theatrics. But like, where does where does that change from theatrics to, to actually, actually creating a legitimate living? Not even being, I, I guess, being. Even if you are digital, that's a being. Well, could you say if it has its own mind and makeup and? Because right now life is defined by being made up of cells. Do you think that will ever people will try to redefine that? to include uh, computers as being alive? Because let's say that they do create something so advanced that it's capable of feeling and thinking and determining right and wrong. In a way, it is alive. Like, it's it's living, right? But yeah. it's not living because it's not made up of cells. But in a way, it kind of is. Mm -hmm. But it's not made up of technical cells. I think that's, that's interesting. And I wonder, I feel like in the future, it'll be an issue where, like, Probably the left will be in support of AI rights and the right will be more against it and it'll be that kind of mm -hmm. debate. And I'm, we'll see that at presidential debates and stuff. Because it is weird. Like when you think of the theatrics of AI in video games or anything else, it's like when you – because AI essentially from that case – because I'm st strictly thinking of video games. People are trying to improve AI in video games as it goes on and on and on. And I'm not saying AI in video games will – transgress into it, like the AI that you're talking about, but just in a simple form of trying to understand it. Um, AI is created in video games so that it will make the player work more and think more. Like now, you know, AI usually would probably just shoot at a character's location. Over time, they've changed it to where AI will duck, AI will try to flank. Um, it thinks for itself. Yeah, it, it'll, it'll, in some way try to impede the player by thinking on its feet at, at, at that instant. At what point is that thinking on its feet regarded as not theatric, but as human or as, or as its own, um, property. Cause like your thought, you, you own your thoughts type of thing. Yes. Yeah. Like the scary thing is AI can get to a point where it is far superior to humanity. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, it can think a million times faster, come up with correct answers a million times faster. Uh, so it's like, well, it's that one, isn't it? Like it's 
when it gets to that point where like that's where it's fucked. There, there, because there's a singular it's, moment. It's that's the singularity, and climb right? And, climb and then the singularity is just where it all. Is that what it's called? The loose. singularity, the moment that it crosses. It sounds cool. So let's just say it's called the singularity. Hold on, I'm pretty sure it's called. The, I'm pretty sure that the moment itself is called the singularity, and it's supposed to happen by like 2045 or something. Technological singularity uh, is a hypothetical point in time at which technological growth becomes uncontrollable and irreversible, resulting in unforeseeable changes to human civilization. So then the big question is, when do we, 2045 is, is the predicted year that the singularity will take place. And that's where they think the, the AI will be like, who am I? That is the, what am I? That's the point when it becomes past humanity. Like when technology will suddenly pass humanity. Mm -hmm. So become like the next level of technology. 2045 is not that far away. No, I mean, I'm years. thinking of like the difference in terms, I think we talked about this recently too, but the difference in terms of what we perceive is like future technology, because we're at this point of the techno technological revolution, are we really just at a plateaued point where all technology, we can kind of feasibly see where it's going? Because when you think about people like my grandmother, like why would they ever think of like, who, who like was living in the forties, why would they ever think of iPads or Gmail. Yeah. And, you know what I mean? That's the thing is, we, or I guess it's like mail that you could send through. Cause at that point it's like, what is the, you're not thinking of internet. You're not thinking of like, what if we could send this you wirelessly? Don't think you don't know it. what wire, like, yeah, wirelessly, but like, how does that work? About? Yeah. Cause the thing you is, you can't comprehend it or she couldn't, she wouldn't be able to comprehend it. Our generation, the one you and I were born in, I think, I think has witnessed the biggest technological explosion of any generation a hundred like 100 200 years prior which is why in most schools it's the students that are teaching their teachers how to use their smart boards right my like mom that. my mom uh is an elementary school teacher and <clears throat> she'll tell me about uh some of her students and like what they're able to do on the computer and technologically and i was like Bro, I was on kids' picks and learning how to do Microsoft Word. Back then. <laughs> I know. And then just thinking, I remember in middle school, I was building websites and shit using HTML and all that. Mm -hmm. Like, my parents wouldn't even know. They're like, HTML, kids are getting smart. What? Kids are getting smarter, and or kids are getting smarter in the way that they're learning to utilize these tools at a younger age. Yes. And I think it's not crazy. necessarily becoming smarter as in more mature. Yeah, but smarter as in like uh, using tools to. Uh, make life easier mm -hmm. and I think what's crazy is just the what I think everyone overlooks is the massive change in technology since we were 10 years old when I think about your first cell phone and I think about the iPhone 11 yeah did like I remember asking my dad do you think we'll ever have phones that are like computers and now look at this it the whole thing like the whole, it's one screen that you just touch things well I remember having one computer in the house it was a tube monitor with you know mm -hmm. how loud the desktops were mm -hmm. and how slow the internet was now you, you can look use the at phone the, at the now you look time? at this it's crazy the like people really I think a lot of the times take their phone for granted it is the most the the smartphone is probably the most like revolutionary invention in terms of like a product because now everybody has the entire internet every single piece of information that they could ever need to access or imagine at their fingertips no matter where they are it's it's not even it's also like not even a matter of oh you have to be in a certain place like i can be driving down the highway and look up an archive of like mammoth genetics or some stupid shit like that yeah. it's like we have more access to more information than anybody else ever has in the history of mankind mm -hmm. you know and that's crazy i think because that is taken for granted a lot just the incredible broadness of information that we have access to like just everything you can well, like during this i was able to look up all these different things about colors and singularity and well you remember there was that fight that our, our school systems were having in terms of the information that was now available to everyone in their homes and or having like when you had a book report, you would have to go to the library and check out several books and hopefully these books would have the information you needed. But then all of a sudden Wikipedia came about. And yes, there were some problems with, with, with Wikipedia at the start in terms of trustfulness and all that. But there was also other places online which you could get this information. But teachers looked down on that information strictly because it was from the internet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But but you can understand why. But at the same time, now you're able to use the internet, and you know they. I think um, later in high school, and then 
yeah, it was it was kind of in high school where the school system started to adapt Easy and they up. were like, okay, this is how you add websites to your bibliography. Do you remember that Wikipedia was like, you could not touch Wikipedia for any school projects a long time ago. Remember Wikipedia was like, nope, you cannot even, like, Wikipedia was regarded as- the, It was just all lies. The, it was all lies, the worst source. And I personally see Wikipedia as, a, as one of the- best sources for information now but if you remember when we were around elementary yeah. school middle school it was very debatable of like what information wikipedia was mods sometimes. are intense they now are, now it's good they have a good system and of course you can still find there's still flaws. misinformation i mean they're there we proved that with our star debacle because someone was able to change the actual for a Wikipedia short period system. but then look at what happened yeah um I, I think Wikipedia is incredibly trustworthy. Obviously, there is misinformation now, yes. on there, but I think today in 2020, if I want to know something, Wikipedia is a great place to find it because it's literally... Not only that, but I think teachers failed to realize that Wikipedia, as you were saying, like could be changed at an instant. Remember, we were saying, oh, they can correct that. You, if, if a book's wrong about something... It's wrong. It's they'd wrong. have to republish yeah, a whole exactly. new version. And that's why you'll see books... <clears throat> Uh, like I remember, think about this: the books that we had to use, for instance, the MLA that we handbook. were forced to buy. Yes, forced <laughs> to buy for two hundred dollars. Like my college textbook would be like thirteenth version or like fourteenth version, and it's like so they had to change stuff fourteen times. Yeah, it's like why wait. am I paying two hundred dollars for something that's just going to get changed again? I can't wait for all of those because eventually those books will. The internet, there's so much information out there and so much knowledge out there and about any subject that why do why do people need those books anymore i torrented a lot of my which my dad was upset about but i'm like shouldn't be upset about that the, the, it's literally a rip off he's like the school stealing it's like no what the school literally system has from become us. is shit has become it it's eventually what school would become in a capitalist society yes because it's like you need this information to do well in this class and you have to pay for it. And a lot of the times, actually, the teachers have deals with it's the mandatory, companies where, yeah. they, where they will get paid to make that book part of their. And I got to tell you, dude, all the books when I was in college that I had to pay for, which was textbooks, are like four hundred, five hundred dollars. Yeah, I remember not. Using I barely any used of them. them. Exactly. Like maybe like the first week, it's like, well, read this page, and then it's like, it's just because the wow. schools and the, they have a deal with the fucking publishers, probably. If you that. if you are able to find your college textbooks free online, go for it. Because yeah. I think that college well, textbooks are the biggest fucking ripoff. They you have to pay for information that you have to use. I remember it became popular to like buy the used books because they were cheaper. Then all of a sudden they uh, they introduced the uh, the books you could download from the app onto like your iPad. But they're still so fucking expensive. At least when I was looking at books on the on a electronic mm -hmm. device. I it's still books. expensive. I would share books with like, friends. Like, it's no longer about, oh, this is so many pages and a hardcover that you have to put money into making, I guess. This is literally just data that you're selling to me for about the same price now. I don't know how this is in other countries, but at least in America, that's how it is. And also, what's stupid is, like, you're already paying thousands of dollars to take the class. Yeah. Why the fuck? If I'm paying that much money to learn, why do I have to pay so much more to have access to something that is required. I, I if think, it's required, I, I think, shouldn't have to pay for it. I think the books in high school, in college, they sh it should be like this. This is how it should work. The, the, the school buys the books they want to be used in their curriculum, and then the teachers pass out those books to their students, and the students don't eat any of that fucking cost. The school has more than enough it's money. It's the school's job. It, it through, is, it's through, the school's job to programs, supply the, through other programs, through any through through simply just tuition fees. The school has enough money to to take that to take that dent but of letting you use books as schools, part of the curriculum. The people that run the schools want to make money, so oh, they. Well, yeah. And what's fucked up is, uh, like the money is there for these books to be free, but it's not going to be because someone wants to make money off of it, and it's just it's so, a business, you know. It's a business, yeah, and it should. You know, things like school. Things like healthcare, like that stuff shouldn't be business. That mm -hmm. should be like a fundamental thing because that is. What about food? You think everyone deserves a, the right to to have a free steak every day for dinner? Yeah, you know, free steak. You know, if health's a right, food must be a right. Is water a right, Matt? Is water a right? Does water. the government have to supply you with water? Water, water should be a right. <laughs> water, literally, one of the things that you will die if you don't have it <coughs> for three days. Like, it's crazy. Yeah. Like sometimes when I think about water being marketed in 
sold. It's like, who owns water? You know, it's a fucking... Regardless, you are you're you're the only way you are getting free water is if you go to like an amusement park or Disney World and you ask for their little free cups of water because they are they it is mandatory for them to give you water. But I still gotta pay to get in. Yes, I guess I could go to a go to a creek, drink myself a cup of water, but you could use your own faucet. But I you guess still people pay could argue bill. that you could, people could argue that the water you're drinking, you're paying for you to know, be it's processed. Yes, it's convenient. <laughs> I bought a water bottle this morning, so it's like I'm not trying to be like, oh, fuck water. I just, just think it's an interesting, out yeah. yeah, it's an interesting concept. Um, we we can point out shit and be on the opposite side or same side of the argument. Yeah, it's just interesting to think about because it, it these are things that like aren't a lot of people don't really think about. And I I like coming on the podcast with you and just kind of like talking about random things bullshit. That, yeah, just like being aware of things, you know. Even though like, yeah, I'm still gonna probably buy another water bottle in the next week i'm still mm-hmm. gonna pay my water bill but um i guess water bills make more sense because you know they you, are, you they were paying, are it's a service because it's actually going through pipes well, like heating like yeah. electricity that is a service you're paying for like i i doubt uh th- our district you know or any district really believes that people are going to generate their own electricity no i got my own my neighbor. I'm producing one. it myself. Well, what pisses me off, what you were saying a second ago, is that my mom's a teacher. She gets paid from the time school hours begin to the time school hours end, which is like 8 a.m. to 2.30. Yeah, but they're still grading papers and all yeah, that stuff. Yeah, and my mom, I remember, my mom will usually end up working until she goes to bed. She'll st- she'll stay like two hours after school to grade papers. Then she'll come home and grade more papers. She doesn't get paid for that. Uh, and she has to use her own money to buy supplies for the classroom. So let all me, the let me markers ask you this. and stuff. Are the students paid for homework? <laughs> This is time that the school is relegated that they spend on schoolwork when it's their personal time. Are they being paid, Matt? So I think your mom can take this bullet. The, the thing is, my mom, my mom has to spend hundreds of dollars every school year on like she has to get paper for the class. She has to get markers. Oh, she has to get look, calculators. And it's like my friend, she's not reimbursed for that. Yeah, that's ridiculous. Well, Gray has to do the same shit. Yeah. And what Gray sucks, and Hayden. what sucks is especially in, in South Carolina, in, in all of America, but especially South Carolina. Teachers are are viewed; they are so underpaid, and uh, it, it it really when it's you, such a valuable job. Not yes, there are some teachers who do not take their job seriously, who do hide behind the safety net of uh oh, what's it called? Um, t- 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 it, there's a word for it. It, it, it is just, it's like job security for the tenure. A lot of a lot of uh, teachers will hide behind that. Not a lot, but some will. There are bad examples. But when you see like a teacher that, you know, actually takes the time to like buy the necessary materials for their students, like your mom or people that buy or the teachers that buy the necessary materials to make their class maybe more a fun, engaging environment, like my friends Gray and Hayden, like you see like the, not the you see the cost that these people are giving to to potentially better the future of our nation and i know that's a, a broad stroke to be putting on what teachers do but i do believe that for sure you know it, it's what adults are is essentially you know a mixture of nature and nurture and i'd say school is there equal to that of the parents' time with that kid, and the school needs to take care of those uh, kids. Right, and and my mom, for example, uh, like she puts a lot of thought and actual energy because she wants to be a good teacher. Like for instance, like she she had like a Fortnite themed classroom mm-hmm. last year, and I love that because it's like oh, she didn't have dude, to, but it's like Gray apparently uh, had his uh, solo and duo and like wins and would count up like as the school year went on, just to be like. Hey, these are how many wins I have on Fortnite. Do you guys have that many wins? Yeah. Gray's it, too good at Fortnite. Gray's really good at Fortnite. <laughs> I just hate seeing that my mom has done this for going on almost 30 years now. And, yeah. you know, the my amount. My stepmom is in the same. Uh, she used to teach third grade and she works in the educational. Yeah. And uh, it, it's just the, the benefits suck. They're so uh, <laughs> underpaid. And some places pay teachers better. But, for instance, in South Carolina, it's shit. It, there, I'm sure private no school money teachers are having a good time. Oh yeah, but the public school teachers, like my Catholic mother, school? like our friends Gray and Hayden, uh, South Carolina has horrible public education funding, and it keeps getting stripped more and more. Where they have to start stripping art programs and stuff, and that stuff's so important. I yeah. think in a school, like when they start stripping like music and art programs, it's like Which what? So they can give the money to some other shit. Sports versus the arts, right? Yeah. That that's also a big. 
I, at least I remember it in my school. I don't know if you ever had fights in between, but there were like legitimate faculty heated discussions and debate that spread throughout the whole school about like the dance team versus the cheerleading team, the the newspaper staff versus the baseball team. Like, where's the funding going? How come these these sports and these other activities get more funding than these lesser quote unquote lesser respected activities. I guess what because in the South art isn't as respected yes. as baseball, good old football, football or yeah. baseball. Rugby. It, cheerleading. And it's frustrating. Dance, because interpretive dance. That's gay. <laughs> I want to see my my underage daughter with all of her friends shaking her ass. <laughs> It, it sucks because the money no judgment the cheerleaders there, there is the money like to fund all of this stuff with with more than enough funding but it doesn't get allocated to that yeah you know? and and it keeps getting cut but then there's the argument of the sports programs are what are also what bring a lot of money in for the school when you think of the people that come to the football games or the baseball games that buy the snacks at the at the at the snack bar and stuff like that or the t-shirts it does bring them more money than the newspaper staff ever will and so then the then the school goes well yeah that's relegated that that should get more money and maybe yeah. it should but i don't think that should come at the cost of of taking away um, certain avenues for young children to explore yeah it's just uh, the education system in America is horrible, especially once you get to like universities and colleges. I couldn't make a better one. I ne I wouldn't even know where to start, but it sure needs to get better. So like, well, look at one of the fifty countries that does it better than us, and maybe take a page out of their book. But that won't happen. Well, no, it's America. It, well, um, it's also you have to remember that you know the political system affects every other facet almost of society like uh capitalism is ingrained in every facet of society in america yeah that's like, just the way it is you see in our medicine in our education um in our mental health even which is disgusting um did you see that uh i saw this yesterday like people were like there's this big sign for like covid testing like to get covid tested and the whole thing was a pepsi advertisement I but saw it also that. said yeah, like yeah. covid testing it <laughs> yep. was like what kind of dystopian hell are we living in <laughs> was that a tweet it was, was on, twitter on twitter and it was on reddit okay it, it, but it's just like the whole thing's a big pepsi ad but it's like covid testing site <laughs> brought to you by pepsi well, I, i'm actually surprised pepsi has always taken some interesting leaps forward with their <laughs> advertising campaigns like the, was it the K kylie jenner commercial yep, kylie jenner and now this one which is I, I, I haven't I, I don't know if they're the first, but they're one of the first. I don't think I've seen a company jump quickly to associate with a deadly disease such as COVID. And I'm not saying they're trying to associate. They're, they are promoting tests and stuff, but it is weird to see a Pepsi bottle next to the word COVID-19. Well, like, could you imagine seeing Coca-Cola next to malaria? Make sure to get your malaria vaccine sponsored by Coca-Cola. We're talking about it, though, aren't we? Yes. We're talking about Pepsi right now and hundreds of thousands of people. No, it works. It's it's, yeah. it's marketing. But it but w when you think of marketing, like one of the first rules is to not associate with yourself with something that would make the target audience kind of dissuade them from like, oh, when they think of Pepsi, they're going to think of COVID. But they're turning that on its head and they're just going, hey, we're trying to be helpful. Yeah, it's weird. Anyway, guys, I think that's about all the time we got for this episode. Go Go pick out a favorite color. Go go pet your computer and, and make sure to watch the uh, super mega's number one favorite wrestling podcast <laughs> the, the getting it in raw with that, the, with, the with the mucker brothers the mucker brothers those are the, that's the alternate versions of the tucker brothers <laughs> i made them all up um I, I go real quick about that the ads uh we're talking to our ad agency about we we did not know that that many ads were getting put on our podcast on Spotify. On Spotify, at least. YouTube is just going to be the actual ads that we record. But I, on our other versions on Spotify and Apple Podcasts, other ads are inserted after we record the podcast. We give them time codes. And there's a specific number of ads allotted, blah, 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 blah. Um, but recently, it seems like that's been a lot higher. There, there's a bit of a thought. miscommunication between us and, and the ad read people. And we're, we, we're working it out. So yeah. we don't want... Uh, you guys to be super off put by because we care about ads. our Spotify. Yeah, listeners. I don't want our I don't want our fucking podcast to just be like a million fucking ads. Well, I um, want the people who you know supported us on Spotify, which was the lower fan base compared to YouTube for the longest time. I want to. I don't want now it's to, doing really well. Yeah, and also that's kind of what advertisers base uh, 
on is like Spotify and Apple listens. They don't really care that much about YouTube listens. So for us to actually get deals to bring in more money to support the company, it's like Spotify numbers are very important. And when people are getting turned off because too many ads are being inserted by a third party into our podcast, there, we don't want that. There's a dance and a balance to be made. Yeah, so we're, we're working on that and we appreciate you guys uh, – Sticking hey, through hey, it, sticking, you know, it's all new. It's all new. We're, you know, th there's no, there's no evil, malevolent bad guy in this situation. Probably just comes down to misunderstanding, yeah. and we're figuring it out. We appreciate the feedback. So, Thank so. you guys. Check us out on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, wherever you can find the <laughs> podcast, YouTube. It's all there. Uh, so uh, thank you so much. And we'll see you guys next week for one episode 195. That's right. See you. See you next time, little motherfuckers. Bye. Bye.